time on Nature Inc. we are all at sea, deep down and close to the surface. We're focusing on corals and the extraordinary contribution these living organisms are making to the global economy. While nations are becoming increasingly aware of their value, there are also looming threats to the world of corals. Welcome to Nature Inc., the series that's about the business of nature. In previous episodes of Nature Inc., we've seen how not protecting ecology can cost us dear. In the case of invasive species, an estimated $1.4 trillion per year. Equally, investing in nature pays dividends. New Yorkers have just about the cheapest water of any major city because a far-sighted administration took steps to safeguard its watershed. The value of nature's free services are, by one estimate, worth more than all the economies of the world put together. It's the only marine landmark visible from space, and it's alive. It's not the average reef, not even the grand. It's the Great Barrier Reef. It's one of the natural wonders of the world. Covering 340,000 square kilometers, Australia's Great Barrier Reef is larger than London, New York, and Mexico City put together. This is the biggest single structure made by any living organism. It's a World Heritage Site, and now most of it is under some form of protection. It's the only living organism that you can see from the moon. The reef is actually made of and built by billions upon billions of tiny organisms called coral polyps. Their chalky skeletons create the reef which is heaven for all kinds of fish and marine organisms. They're like an oasis in a desert. These coreus are natural attractants. They have this amazing amount of diversity of life. So if you create this, this three-dimensional structure of the, of the coreus themselves, you create all these tiny little habitats from around the individual polyps all the way through these massive structures like the Great Barrier Reef. And so you, you have a wide range of habitats that are attracting a wide range of species. It's a living kaleidoscope of colors and life. And human beings will pay a fortune to look at it. Industries that use the reef generate about $5.7 billion per year towards the Australian economy. They also generate about 66,000 jobs. And about 85% of that economic activity is through the reef's tourism industry. Cairns is a coral cash point. It's a town catering exclusively for visitors to the Great Barrier Reef. From diving companies to hotels and restaurants to tour operators, they're all cashing in on the coral. This year we're going to hit around about $6 million mark. We've just bought a brand new $5.5 million boat online last November. It is our intention this coming year to carry 36,000 people. That'll average at around about 100 people a day. Tourism generates nearly $50 billion for Australia, nearly 9% of the country's gross domestic product, even more than the contribution of agriculture. And an increasingly important sideline is the aquarium trade. These fish and living coral are sold under strict controls. They're worth around $1,000 a kilo, roughly the same price as some types of caviar. But five years ago, Australia's coral gravy train almost came off the rails. Living coral polyps are sensitive to all sorts of changes. As the last century came to an end, a survey showed more than half the Great Reef was showing signs of damage. From pollution, destructive fishing, careless tourism, and possibly a rise in the sea temperature the region's economic powerhouse was under threat. So in 2004, the previous Liberal government, one not known for its environmental sympathies, brought in strict zoning controls to severely limit fishing and other uses of the reef. E 
Each tourist boarding a diving boat also now pays a $5 toll, which accounts for 20% of the park's total budget. We managed to protect a minimum of 20% of every one of the different habitat types and ecosystems within the Great Barrier Reef. And that's a really great achievement that hasn't been achieved anywhere else in the world. And it's an excellent step forward in protecting the biodiversity of the marine park. The coral quality has actually improved. Some of the corals on our wall where we take people on the afternoon snorkeling safari are pristine, they're absolutely fantastic and they actually weren't that good four or five years ago. Marine parks can only be a part of the solution of protecting sea life. Fish and other forms of marine life stray out of the safety zones and pollution does not stop at park boundaries. But on this section of the barrier reef, limiting access does seem to be having a positive impact. In fact, visitor numbers are up by 5% since the charge was introduced in 2004. The park authorities say protecting the reef is good for the coral and good for business. There are obvious environmental and biodiversity protection benefits because of course the tourism industry relies on a healthy environment. They want to be able to show people big fish and big sharks. So these no-take areas are a great economic boon to them. We're out there showing quite a few thousand people the reef in a controlled environment and making sure that they don't do any damage to the reef. It's got to be there for generations to come. It's easy to see the value of shallow water reefs. We can snorkel in them, see them from the air, touch them. But incredibly, scientists are still only discovering the rest of the world's coral. It lives in one of the most inhospitable places on Earth the depths of the ocean. These cold or deep sea corals have been found from the Tasman to the North Seas and may cover an area bigger than their warm water tropical cousins, according to the United Nations Environment Programme. Only a tiny fraction of the, of the seafloor has been explored so far. If you take, for example, a normal football or soccer field, the equivalent of a DVD in size is explored. The rest of the soccer field we don't know about. The corals that live in these depths provide a vital habitat for some of the most surprisingly valuable creatures on Earth, deep sea sponges. A number of pharmaceutical drugs which are based on compounds found in marine sponges, for example, and the cancer drugs. And the whole market last year was $1 billion. Even skincare products nowadays contain uh, compounds which were originally derived from marine organisms. And uh, the value of that is, uh, we have still no idea, it's a potential treasure trove down there. But these deep sea organisms and the coral they rely on are under threat from trawlers. Eleven countries operate deep sea bottom trawling fleets, among them Spain and Russia, according to the Deep Sea Conservation Coalition. They use heavy drag nets that smash any corals in their path. Some corals may take up to 8,000 years to grow and once trawled, may never recover. Fishing vessels use very, very robust gear. Basically, they use huge trawls with massive steel doors to keep them open and huge rollers to allow them to roll over very rough terrain. And those trawls just completely obliterate everything they come into contact with on the seabed. It's a bit like towing an enormous trawl through a forest to, to catch the deer, but at the same time you're completely knocking over all the trees and all the other vegetation to just get those, those animals that you actually want to capture. Outside of territorial waters, the deep ocean is a global commons, and designating protected areas is fraught with difficulties. In a recent report to the US Coral Reef Task Force, the contribution of corals to the global economy was estimated at $345 billion, more or less the budget of the US military in 2007. 